Hello and welcome to West Wales. If we've not met, my name is Becca and in this video I'm going to be finishing off a quilting project I started a few weeks ago and it's the very first time I've tried any patchwork or quilting since I was about 15. So it has been quite good fun and quite a learning curve. But I am out walking the dog in the beautiful countryside around here so I'm just going to turn you around and show you where we are. I don't know how well you're going to be able to hear me because the wind is blowing a bit. Not too bad, but you know, just enough to be picked up on the microphone. Back to the house and then it's time to get the project basket out and actually get this cushion cover finished. Okay, well I will see you in a bit. Millie and I are back from our walk and I've set myself up in the slightly echoey conservatory. So apologies, I have things festooned all around the place trying to sort of deaden the sound down, but it is a bit echoey in here. I will treat myself to some radio mics at some point, but just at the moment, sorry for the echo. Anyway, the last sewing video I did, which was quite a long time ago, I got as far as making up this block, I suppose we're calling it, for a cushion cover. And this is the first time I've done any patchwork since I was about 15 at school doing O-level textile and design. And the fact that I'm talking about O-levels, <laughs> you'll know how old I am basically because they don't exist anymore. And this was made out of fabric that was given to me by somebody who makes prom dresses and bridesmaids dresses. And I questioned, I was like, prom dresses? Do we have proms in the UK? Yes, apparently we do have proms in the UK. When I was a teenager, not a thing. Proms were something we saw in American movies. They were not something that we attended. But apparently they have come over to the UK and this lady makes a very healthy living making prom dresses and bridesmaids dresses. But she had all these lovely offcuts of all these beautiful, beautiful satins and silks in these lovely jewel colours and I thought it would make a perfect Christmassy cushion to go on my sofa. So I got this far, designed my own block, very excited by that, then um, the sewing's a bit, mm. <laughs> yeah, a bit dodgy in some places, but it's okay, you know, we, we got there. And then I was trying to get a closure and I would thought I'd do a sort of pillowcase closure at the top, forgetting, of course, that I had this very ugly unfinished edge. And even when I turned it over and finished it, it was quite ugly. And I had a fantastic selection of solutions in the comments. I'm very, very grateful for those. What I've decided I'm going to do is this is the backing. So I will hem both sides split it in half, top and tail them, so that my, my hemmed sides overlap each other, so I can sort of tuck the pillow in. Does that make sense? Cushion, pillow, whatever I'm calling it. And yeah, so that was a great idea. So I'm gonna do that. The other thing I'm going to do, gosh, there's so many, th I've made so many changes, I'm so glad. I waited until I had comments of people that do this all the time because this really, it has been really helpful. So thank you if you left a comment. Then when I was out doing my thrift haul, I got this, what I think I'm calling backing. It's not wadding. I thought maybe it was wadding, but it's not. Somebody suggested that it's designed for bag making. I think that is quite possible. However, 
it is not wide enough. So another great suggestion, I think that was Valerie said that, split it in half, zigzag it together, then it'll be wide enough. Then attach it to this as a backing and then quilt or some kind of finish. Now, the quilting I'm not quite sure about, so I need your help again. Do I just use a backing to make this a bit more hard wearing? Or do I need to sew, do a, like a quilt design? I'm not crazy on doing hand quilting. And the reason is that I know myself, I am neurodivergent, I will get bored with that. If I can do it on the machine, I think it will be all right. But if I'm sitting there having to, no, 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 no. Hand, hand quilting, I know with, before I even begin, I know that is not for me. However, I only have my 1990s vintage Frister Roster sewing machine. <laughs> I think I probably do have a quilting foot for it, but I don't quite know what it looks like, so I'm probably gonna have to look that up. Anyway, I thought we would get as far as joining this together to make it wide enough, splitting this down, or hemming this, splitting it down, and then making it into the backing. And then over to you, how do I do the next bit? How do I do the quilting bit of it? I have been watching um, Kate at the last Homely House, I think what her name was then, and she does a thing called Stitching in the Ditch. Well, because, I, because of the way I've designed it, can I actually, can you see that? Can I actually stitch in the ditch with this or do I need to do it in a different way? I don't know the answer. So if you could let me know how I do the next bit, that'd be really great. Anyway, I'm gonna turn the camera around and do a bit of sewing. Going to very unscientifically find halfway. But hey, it works. And then dare I, dare I rip this? Dare I? Yep. Oh. <gasps> That's sacrilege, I don't know. Anyway, done. So this I think is how I'm going to do it. A little bit of an overlap. Let's just make sure that this actually fits. Yeah, I can give myself quite a lot of an overlap actually. Um, yeah, because this is, this is the top, so. Oh yeah, I can give myself plenty of overlap. Voila, I think that's how I'm going to do it. I expect there are people across the globe shouting at me. It's like, that's not how you do it. Well, maybe, but that's how I'm doing it. And then I'm just going to... So I'm trying to make a video and my neighbour is mowing his lawn, which, you know, he's absolutely entitled to do. Folks, we may have to continue this a little bit later.
there we go it will go that works that works so that's obviously the side that we'll see if we turn the cushion over very free edges I think I'm just going to run a quick bit of zigzag round here although I, I'm desperately short on the right colour at the moment oh gosh I really should have planned this a bit better anyway let's just go for it now I'm absolutely not going to be able to rip this so let's just uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna eyeball it Oh, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have eyeballed it. Oh well, I've eyeballed it. There you go. Got a salvage edge here, so I'm I am going to use that as my straight line, zigzag it across there, and let's just make sure I've actually not completely messed this up. And that I've got enough. Yeah, I've got more than enough fabric if I do that. Yay! Right, bit of zigzag now. got this set on the widest zigzag stitch and I'm going to go quite slowly so that has joined quite successfully and now, what do I do next? I mean, I guess I, I mean, uh, yeah, okay, I do know really what I do next, but I'm just not quite sure how to do it. Okay, so, um, there you go. So there is a little bit left over, but I'm not going to trim it until I've finished the next bit of the process, which I guess is some kind of quilting. And this is really what I need your help for. Uh, what weight of thread do I need? Because I this is just regular sewing thread, dressmaking thread. But looking at some of Kate's videos, Last Home in the House, she uses a heavier weight I think but is that because she's hand quilting so do I machine quilt with this weight which needle don't know not needle which foot do I use and I'm actually going to show a picture of all the different feet that I've got I'm going to put a letter against each one and then tell me which foot I use is that okay can you do that for me? That would be great. Then, what pattern do I use? Do I stitch in the ditch? So basically on all the, on all the seams, do I do a grid? Do I, what do I do? I'm not sure. Please let me know. And then eventually, hopefully, this will be finished in time for Christmas. We've got about a month to go, so I'm sure I can get it done then. I don't think there's an awful lot to do, really. It's just I'm not 100% sure how to do it. So I'm going to leave this video here and say thank you so much for watching. Thank you if you have bought me a coffee and especially big thank you if you've bought one of the calendars with Andrew's photographs. So until next time, have a wonderful week.